Hey there guys, Jake Bauer here. Uh, first YouTube video, so bear with me. Probably not going to be very good, but hopefully it's informative. Uh, we're going to throw a humidity sensor on the dryer so we know when the clothes are actually dry. So stick around. All right, for this little project, what we're going to need is the temp sensor. Uh, one of the chips is running the 8266, so Node MCU or the D1 Mini will work. Um, some wire and forced coffee. Here's what the temp sensor looks like. I'm using a Node MCU, and I'm sure you can guess what this is. All right, let's get started. Wiring it up is pretty simple. Positive on the sensor goes to the voltage in, the VIN pin. The negative pin on the sensor goes to the ground pin. And the center pin goes to one of your D pins. I'm using D2. And the sensor comes with this little jump wire, but if you want to solder it up to be more of a permanent install, you can. I, was, I didn't really care that much. All right, once we got her all wired up, then we just uh, got to create a sensor and ESP home. If you don't already have ESP home installed in Home Assistant, it's pretty easy. Just go to Supervisor down on the bottom and go to the add-on store. Uh, do a search for ESP home and it should pop right up. Uh, click on install. It's already shown as installed for mine, obviously, but um, click on install. And then I click the little slider so that it shows up in the left pane, too. Once you got her installed, uh, click the little green plus sign in the bottom right uh, to add a new sensor. You'll want to make sure you follow their naming conventions in there. No spaces and only certain characters. And then click next. And then pick whatever device you're using for a chip. From the drop down, I'm using the Node MCU, so I'll pick that. But there's a whole bunch of different choices. Click next, and then it's going to ask you for your Wi Fi credentials. That'll get you get it connected to your Wi Fi router. This OTA access password, that's going to be the password that you use to add it to Home Assistant later. So set it to something that you remember. All right, we got it all set up. Now I just got to compile it so we can get the binary file so we can flash it in a minute. All right, to compile it, just click on that menu on the right, click Compile. It'll go do its magic, and I'm going to speed it up here, so make technology work for us, right? So it'll go faster. That little yellow warning is normal, so just ignore it. The first compile always takes a little bit longer, but the rest of them are a little quicker. You can see mine took 82 seconds. Once it's finished, on the bottom right, just click on Download the Binary. Save it to a spot on your hard drive that you can find because you're going to need it in a minute. All right, let's flash this bad boy. The first time you flash it, you're going to have to have a flash utility. Every flash after that can be over the air, but the initial one. In order to get it on your Wi-Fi, you got to flash it by plugging a USB cable into it. If your chip's plugged into USB, it, the COM port should automatically pop in there. If not, you probably have to install the drivers. And you want to click on the Config tab and then click on that little gear icon to browse for where the file is. And then make sure that little square box on the left is checked, because if not, it'll just disconnect and won't do anything. Uh, go back to the Operation tab and do the old flasheroo. You'll see the MAC address is populated in there when you hit flash. If not, something's wrong. And I sped this up 10 times to just so I can give you a perspective of it goes a lot slower. After it's done, take a gander at the log, make sure there's no errors, and should be good to hook. All right, to configure the temperature and humidity sensor, you need to go to the ESP Home site, and it's going to give you a little snippet of code that you need in order to add so it can read and understand what the sensor's telling it. Go to Sensors, and then you'll see the DHT down below. Copy that code there, and we'll be pasting it into the YAML file in ESP Home under Home Assistant in a minute. Just click Edit to bring up the code and paste it in. And you're going to want to tweak the default settings to, you know, obviously name it whatever you're setting the sensor up to be and whatnot. If you decided to use a different pin, you can change that too. 
and the update interval, you can set that to change how often it sends a new reading. And now that it's been flashed over USB, you can do an update um, just over the air. So click upload and it'll flash it without having to connect it again. You can actually install it where it's going to be permanently now too and um, just update it over the air. Click on save and close. When it flashes it, it's got to reboot, so it takes a minute for it to reconnect. It'll keep retrying until it gets it, so if you see an error, don't worry. Just got to give it a minute. After I flashed it the first time, I noticed that the readings were way off. I, I, then I realized you have to tell it what model of temp sensor it is, so here's how to do that. Hit save and upload it again, and any changes you need to make in the future are just that easy. And now our readings are accurate. And let's say that refresh interval is too slow for you. All you got to do is go in there and change it, and then re-upload it again. That's better. Well, every second might be a little excessive, but you get the point. I just crammed a chunk of foam on the bottom of it to keep the pins from shorting out, but you could come up with some sort of enclosure or something if you want. I'll probably do that down the road, but not worried about it right now. And then I just plugged it in with the old phone charger and uh, stuck the sensor inside the uh, vent in the back of the dryer. All right, now that we got some data flowing, let's get it integrated into Home Assistant so we can actually use it. You'll probably get a notification pop up automatically right down here. Um, I've already done this once, so it's ignoring it. It figures it already told me. Otherwise, just go to Integrations under Configuration and click Configure under ESP Home if it discovered it. And this is where you put the OTA password, the over the air password that you set earlier. You can assign it to an area if you'd like. And then go to your entities just to make sure she's in there. It's showing up twice for me just because I already did it before. I'll go in and delete the old one. I wanted something to tell me that the dryer was actually running, um, so I added a little MQ MQTT dummy sensor. You just got to add this to your config file in Home Assistant. I set up two automations. One to publish the state when it's running to that MQTT sensor we set up. And then the other one just to give me a notification when the dryer's done. Here's my dryer state automation. Basically, if it's over 90 degrees, uh, it's going to be considered running, so then it just publishes a payload of drying um, to that sensor. And the notification automation just looks at the humidity level of the exhaust. And uh, there's a condition set in there too, so if it's above 90 degrees, that way I'm not getting notifications if it just happens to be humid down in the basement. Unless it's 90 degrees, but I could change that too. It's going to be kind of a trial and error to dial it in. And so if those conditions are met, it'll give me a little notification over my Google speaker uh, telling me that the dryer's done. And you could set this to do any number of things. You could set a notification to your phone. You could have it blink lights. You could have it do whatever. In order to figure out what the actual drying cycle looked like, I built a couple of dashboards in Grafana. So here I'll walk you through how to set up the dashboard. All right, we start by adding the entity ID. Uh, you want to make sure that you put a uh, measurement in there, too. That's, if you don't have any data showing up, chances are that's what you didn't do. And if your lines or dots aren't connected with lines, or if it's not shaded or whatever, you want to change that fill to none instead of null. And since we're looking at a percentage here, I like my scale on my y-axis to go from 0 to 100. It just makes sense. So you change that here. There's two different y-axes, so make sure you choose the one on the left. And I like my legend down on the bottom to show the actual current reading, too, just to make it easier to know. All 
All right, so that's the humidity dashboard. Let's add one on for the temperature quick. And I forgot to label that last one. We'll go back and do that in a minute. And I like uh, the transparent display too. It just seems to look nicer. There we go, make these tweaks quick. And I didn't show it here, but don't forget to save your dashboard because if you click out of here, it just goes away. You want to click on that little disc up at the top towards the right. All right, once they're all set up, then you want to choose your time frame and then your update interval. And here's how you do that. If it's not updating, this is probably what you didn't do. All right, we got some pants drying, and this is what the data looks like so far. And after the full dry cycle, this is what the graph looks like. My dryer is a rickety pile of junk, so I, my door popped open a couple times. So that's what those little blips are. But now it's a smart rickety pile of junk. Dryer should be done, but who knows? Well, thanks for watching. I hope this helps somebody get this stuff figured out. Um, make sure you click like and subscribe, like they say. Have a good day.